Jim Slotek of the Toronto Sun called this movie sick-tastic. What's up everybody? Yeah, I'm here today to talk about See No Evil, the original one, number one, uh, because the sequel is coming out here like in a month, uh, directed of course by the Sasuke sisters. I liked American Mary, so I'm definitely going to see See No Evil Part 2. So I had to go back and refresh my mind of See No Evil Part 1, which came out in 2006, directed by Gregory Dark. And you know, his other work is mostly, it looked like porn from IMDb. I know I heard the name someplace, and he's done a bunch of music videos. The writer was Dan Madigan, but... I don't know how much that really matters because the story is your basic slasher story. Stars Glenn Jacobs, of course, is Kane, the Undertaker's brother or whatever from WWE. At least that's the way I remember him. Um, I haven't watched wrestling in a long time. I just seem to be watching a lot of these WWE movies. And, you know, most of them are kind of, eh. This one wasn't too bad. I know this was, like, one of the first ones. But it's your basic slasher story. A bunch of juvenile delinquents wind up going to this abandoned hotel to clean it up. And... You know, Kane's there. Jacob Goodnight is the name of the character. Apparently it was edited out of the film the one time they said it in the movie. Um, but yeah, his name's Jacob Goodnight, which is kind of stupid. And he's this big hulking guy, and he's basically a fucking killer. He kills you, um, and he pulls out your eyes, hence the see no evil thing. There's more to it than that, but he's basically in like a cross between um, a lot of Jason Voorhees and a little bit of Leatherface. That's kind of the way I saw him. You know, he's got the crazy family. You know, the one first person he kills is kind of reminiscent, too, of uh, Leatherface's first kill in uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's one thing I noticed. But let's get into the good and the bad. Like I said, it's basically him just running around killing kids. There's more story to it than that, but that's basically the base of it. The good part is Kane is pretty cool. Um, his face is almost, not I wouldn't say ugly, but he's so, like, you know, his features are so big and large and his head is so big. He doesn't even need a fucking mask. I know in the second one he's going to have a mask. I haven't watched the trailer, but in this one he didn't need a mask. Uh, he has, like, two different colored eyes. He winds up uh, getting shot at the beginning of the film. That's not too much of a spoiler. That's just the intro. And, uh, yeah, he's pretty good as the killer. Um, besides that, overall it's kind of a solid slasher. I mean, the story is pretty generic. It's stuff you've seen in all these other horror movies. But you know what? The way they pasted and everything was pretty cool. It also had a couple little twists, which I like. But the best thing about it all, I think, was what happened to Jacob Goodnight at the end. I want to talk about it, but I don't really want to spoil it. But let's put it this way. You know, the kids, of course, fight back towards the end of the movie. And um, up to that point, all the kills suck. And what they do to Kane at the ending of the film, I keep calling him Kane, but... What they do to him at the ending of the film just brought it up like a whole half a point for me. Because before that, I was just like, this is so generic. And, you know, the only good part is, you know, watching Kane kill him, but the kills suck. And when it came time for Kane to get it, I really liked that part. I really liked that. I watched it twice. The second time I watched it with the director's commentary because I just wanted to hear what they had to say. And there was something else I wanted to check on. And that leads me into the bad parts. Like I already said, it's generic. All the stuff you've seen in other horror movies. Uh, most of the kills just suck. I mean, one girl gets killed with a cell phone. That is so fucking stupid. Um, I thought that was completely lame. Um, and then his head. I'm going to talk about his head for a minute, and this is like a minor spoiler, but there's a part at the end of the movie, like I said at the beginning of the movie, gets shot in the head by one of the cops who turns out to be the Ahab character. Kid hits him in the back of the head at the end with a pipe, and then he has maggots. So I was like, oh, well, maybe they're implying he's supernatural, and then they'll explain more in the second film. So I had to go back and watch that, and I watched the entire ending, and I listened to the director's. And it was just supposed to be that the gunshot was infected for like four years. I'm like, you die from shit like that. I mean, I know it's a cheesy slasher movie. You know, you'll still die if you have an infection that close to your brain for four fucking years and it's bad enough to have maggots in it. I thought they were just going to leave it alone. And when I watched the commentary, I thought they were going to say, I see, like, it's like a hint of him being supernatural, which would explain him, you know, surviving over to a second movie. But no, it was just supposed to be, he was supposed to have a head infection, which bugged the shit out of me. Okay, that's, besides that, it was generic. Um, but it's like a good generic, you know, it's like that basic hamburger that tastes good. I don't want to cap on it too much because I did enjoy myself watching it. It didn't seem too long. Um, you know, you, it was basically what you expect when you sit down to watch a slasher. Nothing new. I'm excited to see the second movie. Um, and like I said, Kang is actually a pretty cool serial killer because he's like so big already and he barely needs like a mask because he's so freaking ugly. But I think they should have left him more of a supernatural thing, which I'm sure from reading the synopsis for the second movie without watching the trailer, it says it takes place in a morgue. So I'm assuming it's going to take place directly after this movie. Uh, so watch See No Evil Part 1. I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. Barely a 3 out of 5. Like I said, the what they did to Kane at the end of the film, you know, sold it for me. I know the CGI looked a little weak in some of the film, but it was 2006. And I guess I shouldn't use that as an excuse. But tell me what you thought of the original See No Evil. Um, has Gregory Dark only directed pornos in, like, rap videos? Because 
that's what it looked like from his IMDb page. That was one of the more interesting things when I was watching it. Um, are you excited for the Sasuke sisters? Someone corrected me on their name, so I'm saying Sasuke now. Um, are you excited for their version of uh, Jacob Goodnight in See No Evil 2? And I'll see you guys later. Hopefully my sound is getting better. I am working with this damn new mic. Appreciate all the support. See you guys later.